Galileo had an inclined plane and he dropped a ball down the inclined plane. This is one, two, three, four, five seconds worth of time. What he found was that for each of these different intervals of time, the distance that the ball rolled was in the first second a length of c. The second was 3c. The third was 5c. The fourth was 7c. And the fifth was 9c and on and on. So what he found was that each second that the ball rolled um, was equal to uh, the odd numbers. 1 times c, 3 times c, like that. So you get 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and on and on. And no matter what angle he put the inclined plane at, it was always this result. Galileo uh, talked to Newton, and Newton realized that uh, if you have a square and you add three squares to it, you get another square. And if you add five squares to that, you get another square. And if you add seven squares to that, you get another square. So instead of taking each second individually, Newton took the first second, added it to the, f and then added that one, and added that one, and added them all together to come up with uh, the squares of the numbers. So then you could say that the distance that the ball travels uh, as a function of time is equal to uh, the constant c times time squared. So if you take the inclined, inclined plane and you put it horizontal then in however many units of time, maybe three seconds, the ball's not going to roll anywhere. On the other hand, if you take the inclined plane and face it downwards completely, the ball's just going to fall relative to the force of gravity. So this constant C for a free falling body would represent the force of gravity. And people know that in the old days if you drop something you could tell what the velocity was at time one and what the velocity was at time two, but they wanted to know like if it was falling at 10 feet per second here and 50 feet per second here, they wanted to know how fast was it falling at this point. In those days all you could get was the average uh, velocity and uh, that was equal to uh, uh, the distance 2 minus the distance 1 over the time 2 minus time 1 time 2 minus time 1, which gives you the average uh, velocity, and uh, which is good. It could tell you, you know, what your average velocity was in this interval of time, but people wanted to know what the exact velocity was at that point in time, which is the instantaneous velocity. And if you try to do that, then the equation blows up, because an instantaneous velocity, you have no, your delta t, uh, heads towards the limit zero and your equation blows up because you're trying to divide by zero in that case. So what Newton realized was that what you could do is you could you could take a time at some point and add an arbitrary length onto it. Uh, and so instead of, so you could say that um, at some time t plus uh, some differential of t, which you call h, you could say s as a function of t is equal to c t squared, and s as a function of t plus h is equal to c times t plus h squared. 
Then what you could do is use this uh, this average formula, and you could say that uh, average or the velocity is equal to um, is equal to c times t plus h squared minus c t squared over h. And then this expands to become uh, c times t squared plus 2 t h plus h squared minus c t squared, which cancel this and this get canceled out. And this is all over h. And then the h cancels here and here. So that leaves you with 2 t plus or 2 okay plus h times c and then you let the h go towards zero and now your equation doesn't blow up as you take this uh, delta and time delta this differential or di this difference in time and and uh, move it towards the limit of zero in the old case the equation blew up but now newton found a way to do this your equation doesn't blow up h goes to zero so as uh, so now you have v equals two c t plus h as it goes to zero. Your final result then is velocity equals two c t. And now you can plug in any time of t here and get a result for velocity here for any point along the uh, a line. And if you take the second derivative, what you find is that uh, dv dt equals, um, you go through the same process, and you'll find that uh, it equals 2c. Therefore, gravity equals 1 half, or actually c equals 1 half g. And then you plug that back into your equation.